You're listening to episode 89 of Work Your Plan with Kendra. Hey, y'all, this is Kendra, the founder of Strong Her Me and the host of the Work Your Plan with Kendra podcast. As a women's empowerment coach, I help Christian women reclaim their authentic voice while establishing a business or ministry that reflects their calling and their core values. This podcast centers around practical strategies to work your plan, including how to overcome fears and other mental barriers, keeping you from taking the risks necessary to see yourself the way that God sees you. I like to interview other women or share my own insights from working my plan to show how small intentional steps have helped us reach our goals. Welcome back. If you are new to the podcast, welcome to you as well. Uh, I'm really thrilled about this week's podcast episode. Before I talk more about or talk at all about this week's podcast episode, I just wanted to make you aware of something if you aren't already. Last week, I released part one of a two part bonus episode because July is Minority Mental Health Month. And in the bonus episode, we talk about some of the unhealthy ways that we cope with stress and trauma. And in part two, we're going to learn from Charlie Berry, who is a licensed professional counselor, who was also one of my guests for that episode about healthy ways of coping. I think this conversation is going to be very enlightening. I hope that you will listen for yourself and then also share it with the people in your life that you love and care about. I hope that July being Minority Health Month, the awareness of that will make all of us more conscious about our mental health. And that maybe if you've been on the fence about getting the support that you need, or someone in your life has been on the fence, that this will be something that will give you the courage to maybe take that step. And I would love to know your thoughts. That podcast episode, part two of that episode will actually be available this week on Thursday. So the day after this particular episode releases. So I hope you'll come back and listen for part two of that bonus episode tomorrow. Now on to today's show. Authenticity and the power of words is our theme for the month of July on the podcast. And in episode 88, I talked about the power of words, the words that we say to ourselves. And I shared some books by authors who have mentored me with my own self-talk. And maybe you can also relate to that as well. Now, I have been sharing many of the physical books, like the books you can actually hold in your hand for a really long time. I I have talked about those on the podcast in the past. And this week, though, I wanted to actually make some recommendation of some audio books. I love listening to a book in the author's voice. There is a connection that I think that is made when you hear someone's voice, someone's words in their own voice. And I think one of the powerful elements about podcasting itself, so even you listening to me right now is you hearing my voice um, you because my voice tells a story. You learn a little bit more about me when you can hear my voice. Maybe one of the things that you learn about me is that I am Southern. Maybe you can hear that Southern accent that I have. You can get a sense maybe even of my body language that I'm smiling or that I am excited as I'm talking about this. And you can see maybe even some of my flaws. The fact that I'm not this maybe perfectly polished speaker, that this is something that makes me human, just like it makes you human. You also maybe even get to absorb some of my personality, some of the quirks in my personality, the things that make me me. So that is one of the things that I really love about hearing audiobooks, being able to really connect with the author of the book. And then also just the portability of it, the fact that you can take it with you wherever you go. You can have them as your companion in your car. If you're going on walks in your neighborhood, maybe you're working out, all those different things. Now, full disclosure about some of the books that I'm going to be recommending today. I don't necessarily remember specific details or talking points from these books 
to a certain degree I do, but not anything that's super detailed. But what I really remember about the books is how I felt after listening to them. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. One of the things that I noticed that all the books that I'm sharing with you today have in common is that they're memoirs. I think maybe one or two of them does have some of that instructional feel to it. But for the most part, the majority of the book is more of a memoir of them sharing about their life. So you're going to learn about the author's family of origin, their experiences and how those experiences have shaped who they are. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring these specific books is because maybe like me, you read a lot for instruction and information. Well, these books let me just read because I enjoy them or should I say listen because I enjoy them. They allow me to just be, to take in the craft and the creativity of the words that are being used by the author. And I can say for every single one of these books, I really didn't want them to end. That's how I, how much I enjoyed them. All right, so let's talk about our first book. So the very first book that I wanted to tell you about is How to Fix a Broken Record by Amina Brown. So Amina Brown is a musician. She's a spoken word poet. So her she's a poet, right? an activist, a writer, and she really is someone that I started watching or listening because of her writing. And then I think I later learned that she was a spoken word artist. Um, she is also she is also a Christian. She is a part of the Christian community. And that was another thing that drew me to her writing and her speaking. And in this particular book, how to Fix a Broken Record, it really is a book of essays. So each chapter, maybe not every single chapter, a different essay, but it's not reading like where the reading builds upon itself, where there's one chapter and then there's a specific instruction that's laid out. But it really is a book of essays. And one of the unique things about it is there's different album titles that she talks about in this book. And I'm going to briefly read to you kind of a description of what Amazon says about her book. Allow God to heal the broken record of your soul so you can step into your calling, speak up for what's right and dance your own story of God's grace. What does the soundtrack in your head sound like? The hurtful words of others and the failures of your past determine what record you play the most in your mind. Those painful repetitions often keep us from speaking up, standing up for what's right, being loved and pursuing our dreams and growing closer to God. Spoken word poet Amina Brown's broken records played messages about how she wasn't worthy to be loved. But after years of playing those destructive rhythms over and over, How to Fix a Broken Record chronicles her journey of healing as she's allowed the music of God's love to play on repeat instead. And so this is a really powerful book of her sharing her own stories of some of those broken records that maybe she had about her physical appearance, about marriage, about some of the desires of her heart. And really this listening to this or reading this book, if you were reading it, is really about us also being able to examine our broken records, the things that are playing in our head. And it's something so powerful about hearing other people share their stories, that there is this connection that is made of how we have also been impacted by some of the exact same things that they share. So I really enjoy this book. Again, you can imagine this woman is a poet. So the writing is so beautiful. And she's able she's learned, especially as a spoken word artist, I think I heard her talk about this in an interview, she's learned how to condense her words into smaller amounts, like concise, getting really to the point of what it is she's trying to say because of her spoken word um, artistry. 
And so I think you'll really enjoy it. And another kind of fun thing or fun fact about her is that if you fast forward years later after her writing this book, she has she collaborated with Tracy Ellis Ross to write the pattern manifesto. That is pattern is Tracy Ellis Ross's um, hair product line. And so she was able to collaborate with her to write the manifesto and to also write the glossary for that. So her gift being used in many different ways. Um, And so I think you will really enjoy that book. So the second book that I wanted to share with you is Fierce, Free and Full of Fire by Jen Hatmaker. Jen Hatmaker is probably one of my favorite humor writers. She was, she is someone who was, really a sought after speaker and writer in the Christian community, the evangelical Christian community. And she has written some of the funniest, especially social media posts, but her, just her writing in general is just so powerful. And, you know, she's one of those people that she knows how to to paint pictures and paint imagery with her words and really make you feel what it is that she's writing and is so relatable and just so funny as well. Well, in the last few years, Jen was essentially blacklisted from the Christian publishing industry and the speaking world and everything because she affirmed the LGBTQ community. And as I watched someone who had had reached such a high level of success in an industry be blacklisted, essentially, and someone who filled up arenas when she would go and speak and and then seeing her books being taken off of shelves and people basically disparaging her over that I really admired her courage and her strength I wanted to hear the book in her voice because I knew the energy that she would bring would be so fun to listen to and I really just also wanted the insight of what it was like from her perspective and so in this book she really does give you her perspective and and you get to hear how she is overcoming or how she has overcome um, to, to a place of healing in her own life. And I think for me, one of the reasons, again, that I was drawn to Jen and her book and her story is because uh, the whole idea around bouncing back from a devastating, defining moment in your life feeling isolated, feeling alone, feeling like things that you were anticipating or that you expected for your life look very different. And so just having her hear, hearing her tell her story uh, was really enjoyable to listen to her book, even though it is more of a memoir, there is some parts where she does provide room for you to self reflect. And she talks about different areas of self-reflection for each of us and different exercises that we can do to help us start to be able to continue to move forward in what we feel called to do as well. Um, And so again, this is a great book. So I just want to insert really quick, just a really quick hack about audiobooks. And maybe you know this already, or maybe you don't. When I listen to audiobooks, I listen at 1.3 time speed. That's how I listen to them. So I like that pace because it's not too fast. And then it's also not too slow. And it allows me to get through um, more books in less time. So that's just a quick hack that I wanted to share with you. Now, these next three books. So there's three more books that I want to tell you about three audio books. And these books are three different perspectives of what it means to be black people of color. The first book of the three is The Dream of You by Joe Saxton. And if you have listened to the podcast recently or you have been a part of our Strong Her Me community at any time, you know that Joe's book Ready to Rise was one of our Work Your Plan book club selections. And you can actually go and listen to my interview with Joe. It was on the podcast 
And it's also over on Facebook on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash strong her me under the videos, you'll see that interview with Joe. So this is actually the first book of Joe's that I read was the dream of you. Now, Joe is Nigerian, but she grew up in London and she calls herself a Brit. (laughs) And so that was her childhood growing up. And in this book, she talks about her childhood, her childhood experiences, and she really helps women to understand the importance of rejecting mistaken identities. The book description says that relying on personal stories from her own life, she identifies key scenarios where identities develop that are not true in God's vision, demonstrating the importance of knowing one's name, embracing the gifts you've been given, confronting body issues, managing seasons of depression and grief and letting go of perfectionism. She talks about her own instances of racism and what that was like, even though she was on a different continent and in a different country. I liked hearing this book in Joe's voice and being able to hear her story in her own words was really awesome. The next book that I want to talk about is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. And I want to put a disclaimer on this book and the next the other book that I'm going to talk about. There is some strong language repeatedly in this book. It's not sprinkled here and there. It's all throughout. So just uh, prepare yourself for that. So this really, this book by Trevor Noah truly is a memoir of him coming of age in the twilight of apartheid, as they describe it on Amazon in South Africa. It's about his ability to navigate the things that he was experiencing, what that looked like. One of the things that I so appreciated about this particular book was him painting the picture for me of what apartheid really is and how it impacted their lives. Again, him, it it was there, there was this connection of hearing him talk about what it was like for him to grow up in another country experiencing the same type of marginalization, the same type of injustice that so many people of color, black people specifically in America. And but his humor of the story is not all about that. It really is more about him kind of talking about his life and his his mother's impact on his life and just the transformation that he made from who he is now to who he was back then is amazing to me. It's like there is nothing in his life and growing up being this young teenager and 20 something that would tell you that he would have the kind of success that he has now and just amazing storytelling he he takes on these different accents and dialects just amazing he actually has won multiple awards for this book and you can tell from this book how much he really respects his mother and his mother's journey and how much of an influence she had on his life and so i highly highly recommend this book In spite of the strong language, it is a powerful listen. So I encourage you to to take a look at that one. The other book is Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. What I remember is, first of all, his voice is really an amazing voice. I really love hearing him read. He also has won awards for this book and the, the storytelling. Reading this book or listening to this book actually made me want to read everything that he's ever written. Just the power in which he tells his story, the rawness in which he tells the story, the tenderness. It's raw and it's tender because you recognize that this is a black man telling his story to his son. And it's painful to tell, but it's the truth that has to be told. Again, this is a book I highly recommend. Also, again, there is a disclaimer of profanity in this. So if strong language is offensive to you, then 
this is a book that you would need to brace yourself if you're still going to listen to it, but it's worth it. And, you know, I want to say something about the, the idea of, you know, the strong language. Sometimes that's a turnoff, especially to us as Christians. I understand. I am not someone who, who uses profanity, but I also understand we don't have to open ourselves up to listen to every thing. We need to hear people where they are. We need to meet people where they are. We need to hear the rawness of where people are. And we cannot always expect people to bend to what it is that we need. We need to allow people the freedom to be able to say it how they feel it. The power of them being able to really express their pain and their disappointment. And I will say about this book in particular, I could feel his pain as I was listening to the book. But that was one of the things that made the storytelling even more meaningful for me is the rawness in which he shares and the vulnerability in that rawness, which he shares. So again, I would not share anything that I didn't feel was valuable for you to listen to. So what about you? I want you to talk back to me and I would love for you to head over to Kendra Tillman on Instagram or at strong her me and share with me your favorite or one of your favorite audio books and tell me why I would love to know why Um, because I'm always looking for a good read or a a good listen one last thing before you go do you want an opportunity to connect with some of the women who are in the strong her community we would love to have you be a part of the work your plan book club This month's selection for the book club is The Gift, 12 Lessons to Save Your Life by Edith Egger. And this particular book I chose because this is a book that I read in 2020 that was really instrumental in helping me with thinking about grief and the work that needs to take place when so many of us last year, the life that we pictured our expectations were met with something completely different. And in this book by Edith, Edith is a Holocaust survivor and a clinical psychologist. And there is a term that she talks about in the book, which is called grief work. And I really feel like learning from her about grief. I view grief in a very different way and didn't even recognize within myself some of the things that maybe I haven't properly grieved in my life. And how by not doing that, it actually keeps you imprisoned in your mind. And so in this book, she explains that the worst prison that she experienced was not the prison that the Nazis put her in, but in the one she created for herself, the prison within her own mind. And she describes the 12 most pervasive imprisoning beliefs she has known, including fear, grief, anger, secrets, stress, guilt, shame, and avoidance. And also the tools that she's discovered to help you deal with those universal challenges. This is one of my favorite books that I have ever read. It was very impactful for me. And I truly believe that if you read this book with us, it's going to change something on the inside of you. And and when I say the book, I really mean the author and her words and her story and her journey, that connection that we have as human beings and us being able to relate to each other's suffering and pain and also us being able to go back and grab each other and bring each other into the freedom that we ourselves are experiencing. So the one of the Things that is so important to me as women who are part of this community is that we are healing in those areas of our life that are keeping us well in all areas of our life, that there is a healing that is taking place so that there is nothing hindering us from knowing God in the way that I believe God wants us to know him. And for us being able to then be able to give out of that love and that acceptance and that revelation that we ourselves have of God to be able to give to others. But we need to be healthy ourselves. We need to be healing ourselves. And one of the tools that I have 
created for that purpose is the book club coming together around a common topic, a common theme and discussing how learning this information is changing our lives, what we're doing differently as a result. And I would love for you to be a part of that. We normally meet every week um, on the odd months when we are reading a book together. But for the month of July, because of the travel and the busyness of this season, we're only meeting one time. So we're meeting on Wednesday, July 28th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we would love to have you be a part of the conversation. You can register online and get all the details about the book club at strongher.me forward slash book club. Okay, I have really enjoyed sharing these book recommendations with you. Again, I hope that you will talk back to me on Instagram at Kendra Tillman or at Strong Her Me. Let me know your audio book recommendations. And also, if one of these books really resonated with you that stood out to you and that you also plan on listening to as well, I would love to hear from you. All right, y'all until next time, remember to work your plan and watch God work. Bye.